Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode of Time Warp. This is a series where I take a look at features or things that were removed from the game for one reason or another. In this video, I wanted to talk about the old school Altric Valley Battleground. For the sake of balance and efficiency, ever since it's released, it's been changed little by little over time to the point where it's really just a shadow of what it used to be. And, although I say that, I really mean that in the sense of how much stuff there is to do behind the scenes. The main purpose of this video isn't to say that one version is better or worse, but rather just to give you an idea of what it used to be like. So, in this video, I want to cover everything about this battleground to give you an idea of just how big and in-depth it used to be. It was added back in patch 1.5 way back in 2005, and the condition to win it ultimately was to kill the enemy faction's leader, Drek'thar for Horde and Vandar for Alliance. And these leaders of course have elite NPCs guarding them, and to get them to despawn, you have to take out the various towers and bunkers on the way to the main base. It was mainly a PvP battleground, but you also had a bunch of bosses and foot soldiers to kill as well. You all know how it is now. Typically, both teams try to avoid PvP as much as possible, and just race to the boss and towers and zerg it down. But, the way this used to work was much different. Instead of running past each other, there would be full-on battles at graveyards and other choke points. It was actual PvP. The biggest hotspots I remember were the Stone Hearth, Snowfall, and Iceblood graveyards. It was incredibly hard to get either side to budge, and it was a bloodbath. You couldn't just run past each other and rush the bosses because there were many more NPCs and they were way tougher in general. And putting that aside, people would actually want to engage you so unless you had stealth, running past everything and just destroying the towers like what we do now was out of the question. The whole thing was basically a rush from your graveyard to the battle so you can die again and again, either slowly but surely pushing them back or getting pushed back. The battles lasted for days because there wasn't a reinforcement ticker at the top. This was added in patch 2.3 in the Burning Crusade to put a hard limit on the length of the battle. Before that, the only way you could win was to kill the enemy leader. But it wasn't just a straight up meat grinder at the graveyards. Each side had aces up their sleeves, NPCs to summon, and side objectives to complete so let's get into that. If you've visited your main base, you'll have noticed several NPCs with different turn-ins. Some take hides from animals, others take items looted from players. Each player was lootable, and depending on their race, they dropped different things. Dwarves dropped spines, Torns dropped hooves, and Night Elves dropped their heads, which was particularly gruesome. As for these body parts, you turned these in at your main base for some reputation with a certain faction. You also looted armor scraps from players and NPCs. You and your entire team turned these into your main base and made all of your foot soldiers stronger. Like I said, NPCs were a big deal, so it was pretty important to make them as strong as possible. Every 500 you turned in, upgrade your troops to the next tier. The archers in particular were more powerful because they hit hard and had a very long range. And, a lot of the times, choke points were near them because it was hard to deal with both them and the enemy faction. Another big thing were the wolf and ram riders. If you were Alliance, you had to kill the Frost Wolves, loot their hide, and then turn them into your base. And, if you were Horde, you had to loot the Rams. This was mainly the job for stealth classes like Rogues and Druids because these creatures were only found deep into the enemy's territory, and the battles often still made it near the middle of the map. You also had to train the actual mounts. This was much easier, obviously, since you ran into the less risk of running into enemy players. You were given an item to train them with, and you just corralled them back to the Stable Master. Once you collected 25 rams and wolves and 25 hides, you could send out a cavalry of elite NPCs that would run from your base all the way to the enemies, and these guys would wreck everyone. This was one of the main ways to turn the tides of the battle. Similarly, you could also call a small battalion of foot soldiers to aid you. You did this by controlling the mines found in the northern and southern ends of the map. To take the mine, you had to fight through a bunch of NPCs and kill a boss. Once you did so, a bunch of friendly soldiers would spawn and guard your miners from the enemy faction. These miners would spawn crates for you to pick up and deliver to your base, and once you gathered enough, you would spawn a group of soldiers to push against the enemy faction. The amount you needed depended on the mine. The mine that was on your side required 280 for a full squad, and the enemy mine just required 70 since obviously it was much harder to get to. The biggest tide turner, however, was the elemental boss. From looting players, you also got special items called storm crystals if you were alliance, and storm pike soldier's blood if you were horde. You turned these into your base, and once your team collected 200 of them, you needed to have 10 people head to the middle and perform a summoning. This would spawn a giant raid boss basically, and it would hang around in the middle of the map, and then eventually to the enemy base. The Alliance got a giant treant named Ivis the Force Lord, and the Horde got a giant frost elemental named Lakalar the Ice Lord. And if they were both up at once, it was like something out of a Godzilla movie. It would be a huge battle in the middle, with two raid bosses and 80 players going at it. 
These were hugely important to winning the match, and it would be one of the main focuses of the battleground. They weren't unkillable, but as long as you were escorting them properly, they became forces to be reckoned with. Something else you looted from players were medals for Alliance and flesh for Horde. You turned these into NPCs called Wing Commanders, and they would let you order in airstrikes. The only problem with this is that the battleground starts with these commanders captured in enemy territory, so before you could even turn in those items, you had to find them and escort them back to your base. So, all of this was useful not only for the battle, but it also gave lower levels a way to contribute. The bracket was initially 51 to 60, which is a huge gap, so typically the lower level players focused on training the mounts, running supplies from the mines and so on, while the higher level 60s focused on the actual PvP. So lots of ways to push through the stalemates, and typically you would want to try to summon all of these forces at once to overwhelm the enemy faction. Aside from all of that, you had a bunch of other side objectives you could do. The biggest one probably was a giant troll located in the middle of the map named Korak the Blood Rager. He was a wildcard boss that attacked both Horde and Alliance, and he was the objective for a quest that gave some weapons as a reward. Another side objective required you to go into a cave near your base to retrieve a banner. It typically required a few people, and as a reward, you got a trinket that teleported you to your main base, which was handy. So basically, what I'm getting at here is that it was a huge, huge battleground with so much to do. It had a ton of depth, many different objectives, and it was sort of like a theme park almost. It was one of my favorite things with the game, and it's something they even tried to replicate with the Ashram PvP zone from Draenor. The battles lasted so long, you could be in one all day, go to bed, and then the next day the same battle would still be raging on. Coordinating 40 people to do all of this stuff was a challenge itself, and to win, you not only needed skilled PvPers, but people who knew the strategies, which points to take, and so on. It felt like an actual war, and winning was one of the biggest achievements ever. Over the years, the amount of NPCs have been reduced or otherwise nerfed, and it's been picked away little by little until what we have today, which is basically a rush from one side to the other. There are times where one side will turtle, but due to the resource ticker, it's always over pretty quickly regardless. Some may say that ultimately, it's probably for the best. It would be pretty unconventional these days to have a battleground that lasted for hours, but I just like to reminisce about this stuff and share something cool that a lot of people probably never knew about this battleground. It was much more than a simple race to the finish, so I just thought it would be fun to talk about. Personally, I wouldn't think it would be a bad thing to maybe have two versions of Alteric Valley, the old and the new, and people could choose which one they wanted to do. If they wanted a quick rush to the end, or a day-long massive 40 on 40 mixed PvE and PvP battle to the death. I think this would be perfect for the new Brawl system they have out, and people would like to experience it in its original form way back when. But that's pretty much it for this episode. As always, I hope you found it entertaining, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Time Warp. Peace.